Hello everyone, welcome to my new video. In this video, let's talk about the in-depth review of the MetaVenture 360 camera in August 2020. Upon its initial release, it is very interesting to look back in the history and see what MetaVenture 360 camera has left for us in the 360 industry. There are still many good stuff we should learn from this camera and make our 360 industry a lot better. I'm gonna share with you some design stories, uh, the highlights, the basic workflows, and some pros and cons summary about the Adventure 360 camera. And want to know more about it? Keep watching. My name is Yu Chun Guo. I'm a 360 photography maniac, and on my YouTube channel, you can learn a lot about 360 photography and master the one-shot 360 camera like never before. Yeah, one more thing. It's really hard to get this T-shirt. It is a Madventure limited t-shirt. It is really hard to get this t-shirt in August 2020. Everything's ready for my in-depth review about the Madventure 360 camera. Okay, now the first part, let's talk about the design and story about this camera. I think that many people wonder what is the differences between the Mesphere camera and the Madventure 360 camera because upon its initial release, that was the Xiaomi Media Mesphere Camera 360, right? In August 2020, we can clearly see that there is just no difference between the Mesphere and the MetaVenture on the camera spec because with the latest firmware, both of these cameras have the same spec the 7K photo, and JPEG, and RAW, and 4K. 30 FPS and in-camera stitch and many good stuff. They all share the same design, but they have different color and they have different packages. The company Madventure consists of two words, the Mad the Adventure. So to combine the Mad and Adventure together, we get the Madventure. The Madventure company is still alive today. They have shifted their product into another direction. They are focused on the home surveillance smart camera and you can find there they have a new brand called Dingling. So they can, you can find more information on this brand Dingling. Personally speaking, I have very good relationship with the MetaVenture developers in private. We are very good friends. And I hope they can come back to the OneShot 360 camera industry in the near future. Back to the MetaVenture 360 camera, as we can see that in even in August 2020, this camera is still very compact and very slim. And this camera is just competitive even in August 2020. Back in the 2015-2016, I can clearly see that this camera the design and its spec, its using appearance definitely went beyond the boundaries of the one shot 360 cameras. And even today, we can see that there are still some very competitive features inside this camera. I love this camera very much. And the Madventure 360 camera was the first camera that made me feel very serious about one-shot 360 photography. For the highlights about the Madventure 360 camera, I want to divide into three parts. The first is optical design. The second is the architecture of the hardware and software. And the third part is some excellent features on the user experience on the camera itself. Optical design was one of the best design in the camera industry. As we know that the Ricoh has implemented the twin-folded optical lens system after quite a, a long time, finally there is another adapter that is the Madventure 360 camera. As we can see that this camera was still one of the thinnest and the lightest one-shot 360 camera in the market. The reason why it could be so simple, so thin, is that it has also implemented the twin-folded optical lens system. Different from the Ricoh Theta lens system, the Madventure 360 camera optical design has its very unique approach and it overcome many difficulties because the MetaVenture camera was designed to be an action camera, a sports camera. And inside the MetaVenture 360 camera, the engineer has selected the very best image sensor on that period, put the two image sensors at just the right orientation on the left and right that could suppress the rolling shutter to the best level. So this design has been standard and has some new adapters such as the Insta360 ONE X. Because it has such amazing optical design five years ago, it could deliver very high imaging quality, even on the edge of the imaging circle. Imaging quality is still very competitive in the year 2020. Now let's talk about the hardware and the software architecture inside the MetaVenture 360 camera. The architecture of this camera is actually another very attractive feature for me because I'm very interested in architecture of all the different camera design. So this camera has Umbrella SOC plus Xilin Spartan 6 FPGA. The entry level Spartan 6 FPGA is not only reprogrammable but also has a very low power consumption. And with some high speed DDR RAM, and this camera has a very 
advanced architecture, and it was among a very few of the one shot 360 camera that has a reprogrammable hardware circuit. Inside that Spartan 6 FPGA, the engineer of the Madventure 360 company has implemented a dual ISP in charge of the different imaging sensors, and also realized the hardware level in camera stitch and color correction of all the photo pipeline. This was very unique because at that moment we don't have any one chip solution for the high quality one shot 360 camera. Engineer has to start from scratch and this approach has pushed the industry a lot further and that is really breathtaking about its architecture. If you want to know more about the architecture of the Metamaster 360 camera and not only can see some tear down photos you can see every chip name inside the camera and the company Xilin has also released a very interesting behind the scenes movie uh, showing you the, the design story behind the Madventure 360 camera focus on its architecture and design story with the Xilin Spartan FPGA. Apart from all of that, uh, the power management is also very interesting in the Madventure 360 camera because it was one of the first camera that support the quick charge 2.0 that is the Qualcomm standard. Uh, it can ch charge the camera really fast and the battery capacity was among the biggest at that moment. Uh, it has a metal frame of the camera body and is uh, waterproof. can shot bullet time in the water without having to worry about the camera. Let's talk about some excellent features behind the Madventure 360 camera. Because it has implemented the Spartan 6 FPGA in charge of the dual ISP and hardware level in-camera stitch. The in-camera stitch was the very first greatest feature about this Madventure 360 camera. This camera was among the earliest cameras to support raw DNG format. And finally, we can unleash the every potential behind the every pixel in the image sensor up to uh, 24 megapixels uh, it's around 7k panorama at a long age support of raw dng format we can control every pixel very precisely in post process the other great feature about my adventure 360 camera is that it has very good color straight out from camera because everything was done in hardware level and the jpeg quality it's just stunning, it's just great. There is almost a no chromatic aberration, there is almost a no blurry edge, and you can see everything is clearly very sharp and very clear. And sometimes, uh, if you want to post process with Metaventure 360 camera, the JPEG is a better starting point rather than the raw format. I will talk more about that later on. As the users has grow faster, and more and more users want to implement uh, the Metaventure 360 camera in the virtual tour communities. The engineer finally released the bracket shooting mode inside this uh, Metaventure 360 camera. And with the lowest ISO as ISO 15, and you can shot in bracket 3 mode. You can bracket to the uh, minus 4 to plus 4 all the way up to the minus 1 to plus 1. So it's a very competitive feature even in the year 2020. And don't forget, it has in-camera stitch. So theoretically speaking, you can get 3 bracket 360 panorama directly from the camera. You can do whatever you want in the post process. And that is a wing copper workflow I will share with you in the, my next video. And this camera was designed for photography for photos, so it has full manual control. You can control everything. Now you can't change the aperture because it has a fixed aperture of f2.0, but it can change all the rest settings with a very intuitive interface uh, on the app. And you can control the Madventure 360 camera with a button, with wire, wirelessly, or with your app. So you can control with the push the button, you can control that with the uh, selfie stick has a button on the handle, you can control with the Bluetooth remote controller, or you can control directly on the app. You can do whatever you want to control this camera. So this camera was designed to be waterproof, although it's not 100% guaranteed, but in most of the cases, uh, you don't have to worry about the camera. You can just uh, drop in the water and take some shot. But I think it's, it's not sea waterproof because the Ben Claremont has ever killed one misfire camera in the seawater. Uh, but it's you can shot in the fountain or some other stuff in the raining days, it doesn't matter. Uh, on the Metaventure 360 app, the, the user has a free cloud service to share the friends with your panorama. Cloud service is definitely uh, another great feature and it's very easy to share and very intuitive to interactively view on your phone.
And don't forget, we have a very great developer called Yoshi Hirota. Actually, the Yoshi Hirota's workflow was originated in the days of the Madventure 360 camera. So this amazing guy has developed several amazing apps, the Misphere Transfer, the Misphere Converter, and Edit 360. This app was all designed back in the year about 2015, 2016, and they finally made the mobile DNG workflow on the Metaventure 360 possible and easy and very intuitive, super powerful. This was the only camera in that day that could capture bullet time with waterproof capability. So this camera could also capture 120 FPS at 1080p. Not only can take bullet time, but also you can take inverted bullet time because you can use the other half of the image sensor. The workflow with the Metaventure 360 camera is my favorite part. Actually, you have four options. If you want to be easy and intuitive, just uh, with a single shot and share with your friends. So use it as a toy, as a toy camera to, to make, you, make you happy. Just enjoy the shooting and press the shutter button one time and it's, you are good to go. So you can trust the camera and the shot with a single click. But this camera could be more powerful with some very advanced workflow such as my personal workflow, I call it the Yuqing workflow. I have made a very long video talk about every step about this workflow. You can find it on my YouTube channel. And in my next video, coming next video, I will share with you amazing, very fast and very high quality workflow called the Wing Copper workflow. I name it as the Wing Copper workflow in memory of this amazing photographer. He was one of the best photographer that has made the Misfield camera a shining star in the 360 camera industry. And don't forget, we can have a mobile DNG workflow with the Metaventure 360 camera and with Yoshi Hirota's contribution to our camera industry. And I have ever made a video focused on the mobile DNG workflow on the Metaventure 360 camera in my previous videos quite long ago. You can find it here and I will also put that down in my video description. So altogether, you can have four workflow. A single shot, a Yuqing workflow, Win Copper workflow and Yoshi Hirota's mobile DNG workflow to help you to push the limit of the Metaventure 360 camera. Okay, now let's talk about the weak points about the Metaventure 360 camera. Number one is the battery. The battery is uh, one of the largest five years ago, but it still is very limited. The camera will run out of battery really fast, especially when you shot in RAW format. So I recommend you can shot more in JPEG rather than in RAW and that will save you a lot of time. And with the wing cover workflow, shoot only in JPEG could deliver super high quality and is very qualified for the virtual tour clients. And honestly speaking, the EIS, the electrical image stabilization, was very unique upon its very initial release. But after that, the Insta360 had released flow state, the Rhino also has a super steady stabilization. So these two cameras has just beat the Metaventure down. The stabilization is just so important for the one shot 360 camera that want to be an action camera. For the EIS, it's definitely not the best, but it's not bad at all. And for the video capability upon the Metaventure 360 camera, it is definitely its weak point. And at that moment, this camera was designed for photo, not for video. The chipset is not powerful enough to perform full sensor readout. By binning readout the pixel, you finally get a 3.5K resolution. Uh, although with firmware upgrade, you can have 4K, but that was a 35 upscale to 4K. The Madventure was designed to be a photography camera. It was designed for aiming at high quality photos, not for video. So for the video capability, the chipset is not so powerful to perform full sensor readout. It has to reduce amount of data each of the readout. It records a video based on the pixel binning readout and it can result in the 3.5K resolution. It's just not great in the year 2020. And actually, uh, with firmware upgrade, you can shot in 4K resolution. That was, in fact, an upscaled 4K from the 3.5K resolution. So that reduced your effective area of your sensor plane. Actually, the world's first full sensor readout 4K resolution one shot 360 camera was the Kukam 4K. This is the first generation Kukam. And I will make another serious episode about this old camera. So the lens of the Metaventure 660 camera was designed to be super sturdy. I have uh, fold this camera down to the desk 
for several times. The, the glass is just perfect. The coating does inject some drawbacks, such as the very serious chromatic aberration. Uh, so when you post process in RAW, you can find that they are very serious CA and the color fringe, especially on the blue color. And I have made a tutorial to tell you how to remove all of that in a single click. You can find it here. And to get rid of that, you can finally get a very stunning quality with this camera. And luckily enough, the JPEG format we get from the camera is just perfect because FPGA has done everything for us just at the right amount of time. This is another reason why I recommend you shot in JPEG but not in RAW. And save time, save power, and have better color and less post process. So why not shot in JPEG with my Adventure 360 camera? The other drawback for this is the Wi-Fi control distance. So sometimes, especially when the weather is very cold, we easily get disconnected with the Wi-Fi hotspot in the camera. So you so have to bear in mind, when you control the camera with Wi-Fi, do not leave the camera at five meters away. Final weak point about the Adventure 360 camera is a lack of color management in raw data. Uh, some users have found a very great solution to correct this issue in post. The BSP of the raw capture is just not perfect. It's just not at the best level. And thanks to some great users on the internet, we now have that DCP file, and you can correct this camera with only one click. Okay, to wrap up for this MetaVenture 360 camera, in the year August 2020, this MetaVenture 360 camera is still one of the best camera focused on the photography. It is definitely a major classic design in the history of the OneShot 360 cameras. And also it remarks as a very great exploration about the next generation 360 camera in that period of time. Excellent design of this camera is just so remarkable. And it has been adapted into many other predecessors such as the Insta 360 One X. I do hope that in the future, company Madventure could jump back to the OneShot 360 industry and deliver the second generation of Madventure 360 camera to punch the face of the industry with a higher standard and the next generation design in the year 2020 or 2021. I do hope that day will come. I do hope that every user that already have this camera could make the best use of this camera to deliver high quality images. And in episode three, I will share with you the Wing Copper workflow with only JPEG deliver super high quality with super simple workflow. Until next time, bye.